uh, for joining with us today for another episode of the Woods of Fred of the Humanities. Today we have Professor Creston Davies with us. Um, he's a founder and chancellor of the Global Center for Advanced Studies, also known as GCAS. Thank you very much, Professor Preston Davis, for joining with us. It's an honor to have you today. Um, we have a lot of things to talk about in terms of uh, your engagements as well as um, the, 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 the global, the GCAS. So I, I think this will be a really productive uh, time for both of us uh, to, to kind of exchange um, our views about the humanities and our perspectives. Um, how, what are you, what are you doing these days? Like, uh, how's, how's your engagement? How's your work going on? It's, it's going well. Thanks for asking. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's tough times anywhere yeah. in the world because of the mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. I'm here in London. I was in uh, France for a while before this. So, um, you know, there's, I did self-isolation, mm -hmm. but I've gotten out and gone on walks and started to meet uh, folks that I know, mm -hmm. um, you know, safe distance and all that. But mm -hmm. so that's been good that, uh, mm -hmm. but other than that, um, you know, we're getting ready to brace for a, a pretty rough winter, I think, before mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. vaccines come online and people, you know, the first responders get vaccinated first and so on. So it's going to be a while. And I think it's mm -hmm. shifted a lot with respect to the questions that you are interested in as a professional, uh, namely the humanities. What what do you do with the humanities? And really an important question is, how's the COVID pandemic uh, affected the humanities? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's an interesting question in itself. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think we'll start by talking about your trajectory of work first. Uh, we'll, just uh, take us a little bit into, like you know, along the path that you've uh, you've been working on, and like your research and other engagements that that you've been doing in the field of humanities. Um, sure. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. Uh, the I got interested in the humanities first and foremost when I started reading Victor Hugo's Les Misérables oh. when I was <laughs> recovering from an accident. A mm -hmm. parachute accident training mm -hmm. in the in the US Army. We were training in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And so I started recovering from a physical injury. Mm -hmm. And up to that point, I was very athletic and all of my life had meaning through what I could do with my body, you know, mm -hmm. and um, playing high school sports and so on. Uh -huh. Well, Suddenly, when you're confronted with the very means that produce meaning for you in life, namely mm -hmm. my physical body, mm -hmm. when that's called into question mm -hmm. with a big question mark, mm -hmm. what do you do? You know, like, and so for me, it was like time to, to think about the shift from the body to the brain. Right. And um, so I started to read. Uh, for the first time, really, of any kind of adult level reading. Mm -hmm. And the second novel I, I read was Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Now, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that story, and most mm -hmm. I think most people are familiar with the general plot, mm -hmm. it's quite inspiring when it comes down to what is humanity. And yes. Victor Hugo mm -hmm. was a great hu humanitarian. Mm -hmm. And it so inspired me. It sparked something in me that I just started to you know, look at what is possible for human beings to do with each other okay. and mm -hmm. what can we do? So that led to further studies and it was like windows in the world that I didn't know existed before when I was like, you know, doing, you know, being an airborne ranger mm -hmm. and you don't know, you know, the possibilities in life. And suddenly right. these windows through reading started to pop open and I'm like, wow, look at that. There's history, you know, like, whoa, look at over there. Like, you know, there's sociology and psychology and philosophy. And I'm like, whoa. And suddenly my consciousness started to just expand. And I think that's the core of what the humanities does when you read the humanities and study the humanities, you know, namely mm -hmm. the human self-reflection on what humans can do what we can make, what technologies we can develop, how do we relate to each other and our planet, 
And so when you are confronted with those variables, it's super exhilarating. And my passion just increased more and more. Mm -hmm. So that led me to college and then eventually to a PhD, then a, being a professor at first in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, I realized just when you look at the, the general trend of the humanities, in the university system in the United States, but I think it's these in the public funded education sector at this, at this higher level, mm -hmm. they cut all the humanities fundings. And when you look at, you know, a lot of those variables about why is it that the humanities isn't front and center when it comes to knowledge and education and developing ourselves? Why mm -hmm. is it that you know, you, you start to marginalize the humanities for engineering, for uh, business, for money-making educa so-called education uh, projects mm -hmm. that are subverting the university. Because at the end of the day, and I went to Oxford just for a little while as an undergrad, you know, the center of the Oxford Bodleian Library is... Uh, philosophy, because every door around the quadrangle is me metaphysics, philosophy, mathematics, philosophy. And, you know, philosophy, of course, is the core of the humanities, one of the core pillars. So the humanities under threat, you know, um, the classes aren't bringing money into the university, therefore, they're going to be cut. And, you know, students will get a degree nowadays from a good reputable university, but without taking a humanities course. So for me, it was like watching, when you see that happening, it's like watching, watching the very possibilities of the best of what we can be disappear. Mm -hmm. And when you, if you have a child, which I have two boys, they're now graduated from college. Mm -hmm. They're, I think your age. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you see a promise in a child, and you actively stifle what they're good at doing or what they should be developing as part of who they are, mm -hmm. then it, it feels like a great heist of robbery. And that for me spawned the idea, I think we can do a university or a college that's debt-free and that focuses on interdisciplinarity in the humanities and for and that's that was the reason why back in 2013 seven and a half years ago uh, along with over 100 leading world leading scholars philosophers writers and artists we started the global center for advanced studies so that was really important and you know for us if i can just say just I know this is a long-winded answer to your question, so forgive me. I'm, you can tell I'm very passionate about absolutely. it. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But but for us, it's um, when you see the rise of dictatorships and authoritarian leaders, mm -hmm. and the compromising of democracy, the very basic levels of voting, and when and and the knowledge that you expect citizens to have mm -hmm. when they have that really you know, big responsibility to vote for a way forward in society Absolutely. that's best for not just them, but for everybody as a whole. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not studying the humanities, it's hard to, it's hard to, res it's hard to stifle and resist authoritarian move that let's face it, it's really about brutality. Fascism, mm -hmm. authoritarianism is simply the strongest one wins. And that is, does flies in the face of what humanity has always been about. It's, if you look across the centuries and the millennia, mm -hmm. it, humanity survives when we work together. Mm -hmm. That's how we survive. When we understand what it means to build a better way forward beyond challenges, the plague, uh, now the pandemic, you know, these, and of course the eco, you know, the, uh, the in crisis of, of uh, the environment, mm -hmm. 
you know, when you see that happening and you're not able to work together and you need the humanities to be able to have the skills to work together. And if when the humanities are being marginalized in the university level, you're in trouble. Um, Kristen, uh, let's also tie up with your, your, your the question that you had about the pandemic uh, and the relevance of the humanities today to the crisis it currently faces the, the, the humanities as a field of inquiry. Um, can, we, can we sort of uh, talk about, at least in your context, how, how, is, how does the crisis affect um, you know, um, the kinds of radical forms of inquiry that, that the humanities promote? And um, uh, how, how, uh, how, what kind of an impact does it have? Um, at least um, when, you're, when we are talking about your context. Yeah, it's a good question. But I wanted to first, maybe if I, you're doing this podcast mm -hmm. about the humanities. Mm -hmm. like what inspired you? I'm curious about that. Maybe you've already spoken about this, but I'm personally curious about mm -hmm. why is it that you decided on the humanities? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, I've, I've been a humanities student for the longest time and uh, it's, it's been the aspiration of my parents before that I also pursue uh, a career in, you know, very technical or very uh, scientific um, fields, but it, it kind of never, never interested me. And um, I... But once I graduated from the university, I figured out um, how university, especially when you're out there uh, in, you know, dealing with things in society, you realize what kind of value do people give to the kind of education, the, 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 the intellectuality that you've developed. And um, it, it kind of occurred to me that, that you know, that, that kind of radical thinking that most of the time the humanities offer is, 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 is not acknowledged or is, is just um, brushed off. And you have to continuously get adapted to a very corporate model of working uh, or thinking. So um, on the top of that, like at least in the context of Sri Lanka, humanities is facing, like other countries, neglect, institutional and intellectual neglect. And... Um, uh, this, this, this actually, like very recently, even the president, um, sort of in a very casual remark, said that you know, like how, like implied how science is more important than you know, pursuing subjects like arts or humanities. So this, this was the kind of context that sort of provoked me to sort of start this podcast um, to talk about it to get people into this and to tell them, you know, like building that space where people could talk about the humanities more outside of institutional space. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a, a, another antidote or story that fits along those lines of what your president said. And mm -hmm. let's face it, that's a pretty big trend happening, <laughs> you know, then let's grow the economy and therefore we need engineers and we need mm -hmm. tech people and we need mm -hmm. you know people who can just uh, follow an algorithm mm -hmm. without a heart let's just say you know mm -hmm. so not to reduce everything down to that but yeah um and but if you hollow out uh, for the sake of just growing the economy and you you push what they call stem or mm -hmm. science-based education and you and you just keep pushing that you you're going to end up with a society without a soul and without a heart and without a passion. Um, so, and without really critical thinking. But uh, I, the story, uh, when I was giving a lecture at the University of New Mexico mm. in Albuquerque, mm. back in, I don't know, maybe five, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah on, route, on Route 66, you know, mm. the famous mm. Route 66. Mm. And uh, I, I had uh, spoken with the, uh, one of the deans, I can't mm. now remember, because it's been a while, and the dean basically told us that the state legislature, which mm -hmm. are the politicians that decide the policies and how to allocate 
funding to the university. They basically said, we're only going to fund the university if we prioritize the STEM or science-based, science and engineering-based uh, education. Mm -hmm. And this is a public university. Now, let's step back for a second and think to ourselves, if humanities is defined by a serious and critical reflection upon what humans have done with tools, with technologies, with, the, with nature, mm -hmm. with ourselves and how we organize ourselves, how we build structures in which we find space, like this room and your room and those books behind you and all mm -hmm. that. If humanities is that, and it you know that's the basic general definition, then it would include mathematics. It would include engineering. So in a way, all every activity and habits that we develop as humans are part of the humanities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that division you have in universities is a, is a false division. Right. And it's a division that requires you to step into one mode only mm -hmm. at, at the opposition okay. and at the exclusion of other modes. Mm -hmm. And that opposition is what is the pro is one problem that we that we I think we have. Mm -hmm. So there's what at GCAS, for example, in our in our undergraduate degree program, we teach mathematics within the humanities because mm -hmm. that's where it developed. Mathematics didn't come from like some alien, mm -hmm. you know, people on, from out, outer space. Mm -hmm. You know, mathematics was developed by, you know, Pythagoras and many others uh, all across different civilizations at different times. Mm -hmm. And these rules of how numbers relate to each other, you know, change over time. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and watching that unfold within the context of, of like civilization or humanities is actually contextually much richer, I believe, and it doesn't require you to take that false dichotomy of stepping in strictly one mode to the exclusion of another, mm -hmm. like the mode of the sciences versus the mode of the humanities. Mm -hmm. So I think if you take a broader view of the humanities and you set up your pedagogy, your teaching styles, and the way in which you start to ask questions in a context, that's what's going to give you, I think, a more organic sense of knowledge and how to implement that knowledge. I mean, when you think about it, the most successful, by and large, the most successful people in the world are, okay, successful, that's a little bit of a setup. We could unpack that <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but, but people who are able to like create concepts or ideas or products even mm -hmm. uh, that weren't before created, are folks that genuinely have this organic connectivity and th they're thinking through channels like your brain, like the neuron channels that are firing. Mm -hmm. And if you only have so many channels open, one or two or you know, only a few channels open, your ability to think across the organism of knowledge mm -hmm. is severely limited. And so what we try to do in GCAS is to try to open up all those avenues of thinking and crisscross them. And, and when you do that, wow, suddenly new ideas start to emerge, you know? And Absolutely. to answer your question that you asked previously is it's like for me, or for, I guess I, I could say for our pedagogy, and we take Paula Ferreira, Pedagogy mm -hmm. of the Oppressed, the great Brazilian critical pedagogical uh, thinker uh, whose wife I had met in Los Angeles a couple mm -hmm. years ago. Um, Paula Ferreira, you know, the idea that it's only when you start thinking together as a understanding other human beings and how they think. And when you put thinking together in a room and mm -hmm. you have different ideas light up at different times, it becomes one of the most exhilarating. Uh, it, it's like looking at a painting uh, a Monet or one of these great paintings mm -hmm. uh, and just being, it, it hits you in the belly, if that makes sense. It right. hits all of your, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, the emotions and the affectations are there. And when that starts to happen in a space of respect, but honest exchange, mm -hmm. that's unencumbered, like, oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you can't think that, or, you know, that's too dangerous to think. Mm -hmm. or And so when you do that, it's like the most rewarding experience mm -hmm. I think I've ever experienced before. And this has happened to me time and again. It doesn't happen so much on Zoom, although it does from time to time, actually. Mm -hmm. More and more as we realize, you know, Zoom is sort of the default now. And But then when you accept that, you can start to, you know, figure this out. But it, it becomes an aesthetic of beauty. And that's, for me, what makes life worth doing and living that is that is true that is absolutely true uh let's let's talk about uh the g cast um i i've been a i've been a huge fan of g cast since i saw it on facebook and the post the since i've um, listened to the lectures uh that it has uh it it, it promotes a kind of a not very non-traditional um uh, very radically interdisciplinary academic program. Um, let's let's talk about GCAS, how it came to being, and uh, uh, how 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 does it you know how can we use or how are you planning to use this model to revive this kind of you know uh, the humanities from its uh, yeah. institutional intellectual neglect. Well, thank you, uh, and thanks for following us and. You know, it's um, it's been quite the journey for mm -hmm. sure. It's been, I mean, I guess I've been planning it for almost eight years now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, it started with the idea when my students started to graduate, mm -hmm. uh, when I first started teaching college. And, you know, they have a, to a top degree from a liberal arts college and they are just unable to get a job and, and uh, realizing that they are also in pretty massive levels of debt across across the spectrum of mm -hmm. students from the economic backgrounds. You know, I just realized, like, given that we have new technologies of delivering high quality education, like mm -hmm. Zoom, for example, you don't need to invest in, in millions and millions of dollars of real estate, which is essentially what, for example, what Harvard is, I'll just give you an example. Um, in a couple of years ago, an article was published in which it revealed that the top four hedge fund managers at Harvard earned almost as much as the entire faculty. And then when you look at the endowments of these so-called nonprofit universities, such as Harvard, it's a private nonprofit, but you realize that the money making is happening in livery. Okay. And when you start to see that, you realize, wait a second here, there's a scam going on. Mm -hmm. The scam is let's cover ourselves as a nonprofit, but really invest in hedge funds and real estate and really make the money that way. And yeah, sure. Well, our face, the facade will be a college or university. So just realizing all kinds of, in my mind, unjust ways that education happens mm -hmm. and thinking, well, we have the technologies to develop a debt-free space. And then we later realized, well, any student who pays any tuition to GCAS, whatever money they pay for tuition, we turn that into an investment and convert it into ownership shares. So GCAS is, but we've created our bylaws and our constitution in a way that prevents us from profiting off of funds made from education, mm -hmm. but rather distribute those funds to the very people who decided to study with you. Mm -hmm. And that creates an atmosphere in the classroom that's a much more trusting atmosphere. It's a much more... Uh, uh, it, the relationship and the, the flow of ideas takes place in a way that because they're going to be a co-owner with the professor, mm -hmm. they're working with the professor with, 
in a way that's not when you graduate, here's your diploma, see you later. They're working with a lifelong partner and over a long period of their lives. And so therefore, they're already part of this, you know, what we believe is a beautiful way to do education Mm -hmm. um, by having our students when they graduate become co-owners with us. So that's also very beautiful. And we do like in a Bitcoin, it's not a security, uh, but rather when students do really well on a certain assignments or they publish an article, uh, for example, one of our esteemed faculty members, Braha Edinger, who's mm-hmm. like in the, one of the top, I think she was one of the top 11 female artists of the past century. Mm-hmm. And a dear friend of mine, I love her. She's amazing. She's in Tel Aviv. And she also has a PhD in philosophy mm-hmm. and studied with the great philosophers in, this, in the 80s. Um, she just published a book and on the back, it says Faculty Global Center for Advanced Studies, GCAS. And for that, she gets tokens mm-hmm. that she can either use to you know, purchase more stock or use in other ways, uh, mm-hmm. help with a student. Or when a student, uh, we have one student who's going through their degree program uh, just strictly on cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. And by earning it, by mm-hmm. working and doing editing the GCAS review, they earn the tokens and they're able to pay their tuition that Mm -hmm. way as well. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways in which we're able to function and even grow, not just financially, but grow in terms of like growth is so weird, right? Mm -hmm. Because you hear, well, the stock market, you know, like CNN, like, Oh, what happened on wall street today? Well, there's growth in sector a, you know, like growth is so uh, the, the term itself is so limited And if you think about growth in a wider sense, like growth in terms of like, well, this, even this interview, we're growing together Mm -hmm. in terms of our understanding. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's growth. And if you can measure that growth also in different kinds of ways across sectors, including financial, uh, including, you know, uh, qualitative students, then you know, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful model. Mm -hmm. So we do have courses and seminars in different locations around the world from like Cuba or Havana to all over the world, really. We've done a lot of places, Um, but also online. So anytime somebody who can't afford to fly, but they're really smart, you know, someone like yourself, you can still be part of that conversation. And I think that's what's, we're breaking the walls down Mm-hmm. of like fortress europe fortress america you can't enter because you know you're from a different country mm-hmm. well education literally is is like the jericho story when you run around jericho or walk in the bible they walked mm-hmm. marched around jericho seven mm-hmm. times and the the walls of jericho collapsed you know it's mm-hmm. this kind of story mm-hmm. but that's what we're doing we're mm-hmm. walking around the walls of higher education the ivory tower and, we, and, and as we're doing that, we're going, we're going, well, this genius over there, you know, in this country in, mm-hmm. from Uganda mm-hmm. is able to study with us. They're not able to study with you because you won't let them in. Mm-hmm. But they're bringing something to the table Absolutely. that makes our life richer. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's a beautiful, it's like a banquet that is stale, stale pre, you know, lots of preservative, pre-cooked meals, these TV dinners that you pop in the microwave, you know, it has no taste. Uh, wh- what we're doing is, you know, creating a feast that is so varied in different ingredients that uh, you're able to just enjoy the different cultures and the different sounds and the different languages. And it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, life to, to live this way. The students that comprise the GCAS community are also mostly very non-conventional students, I presume. Um, and um, I'm sure it has it has grown a lot, like the, using the word that you used a lot since it has, you know, uh, it has been founded in 2013 with, with 
a lot of like diverse body of students um, attending GCAS in person and online. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just curious uh, to know how um, how how does the pedagogy in the GCAS um, is used in such a way that that it would you know generate this kind of uh, yeah generate this kind of radical thinking in classes. Um, which is it's, yeah. it's a good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's something like what Plato said in the Republic: "Birds of a feather flock together." <laughs> and when I guess when you start to see, you know, a college emerge that's like, "Hey, you, those of you who have thought thoughts that weren't acknowledged, mm -hmm. yeah, you come, we got gotcha. you." You can think that thought with us, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, those of you who, um, who are so passionate and you know and and read different stories and are connecting with history and 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 people through those stories and those ideas, that you wouldn't get that kind of support at the university level. It's like, oh, what's my grade going to be? What do I need to do to get an A? You know, all, all these these rather bureaucratic concerns for us it's 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 a way and we don't really advertise i mean apart from a couple of facebook groups um and we don't really pay for advertisements very very little if not any at all per month and somehow people they're thirsty and it's like we have some we have some refreshment and you know what that refreshment is, we say, it's you. That yeah. is that is wonderful, Preston. Uh, I'm sure um, we, we, we have a, a lot of things to talk about, but um, before winding off the discussion today, uh, I would like to know if you have any final thoughts, any final remarks that you would like to add um, uh, before our discussion is, uh, is winded off. Well, I appreciate the time and it's it's a great experience to talk with you and we're going to have you on our own podcast here too. Oh, so that'll you. be a really, we'll continue the conversation. Yes, absolutely. Um, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be an honor. Uh, and someone like you doing what you're doing is very rare. And when you're doing it, oftentimes you can feel so marginalized and underappreciated or mm -hmm. not even recognized. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really important that I think we, as a community, we support each other. And we're able to do that now th mm -hmm. with the internet, like 20 years mm -hmm. ago, 30 years ago, it'd be an impossible task, but now mm -hmm. we're able to support each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think that as we think through, uh, as we think through education, and as we think through becoming better human beings with each other, uh, more knowledgeable, but also how to apply that knowledge in ways that are fruitful mm -hmm. uh, and strategic and important. You know, as, you, as we think through that, you know, consider GCAS as a potential landing place for you. Mm -hmm. You will do as much as we can. And uh, we expect you to come to the table reading whatever book we're reading that day Mm -hmm. and you know, illuminating what your experience has been. And mm -hmm. that becomes a mosaic of a cosmic level that's, you know, that I think is almost, uh, it's otherworldly. It's a different world entirely. And that's one of the reasons why we say, as our byline, like we're creating new worlds. Mm -hmm. And each, with each class, it becomes, not all classes, okay? Some classes are just like, oh gosh, you know? But, most of the time, a lot of the time, we 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 suddenly can taste and see and feel a, a different world emerging through our very commitment to growing together. And that's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you for the wonderful conversation. Sorry, I talk, I talk a lot. Sorry about that. No, that is fine. I, <laughs> I really appreciate that. 
Uh, thank you very much for joining with us, and I would love to have this conversation with you again at some point, and uh, we will continue to work together. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today, uh, and I wish you all the best, very best for the GCAS and its all its endeavors. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Have a great day. You Be in too. touch.